So as a, as a denomination, as a community of churches, we are, our goal is, our call is, our mission is to make disciples who make disciples. And as we've been trying to communicate that to our churches uh, throughout Canada, uh, I've come to people and said, well, uh, we're here to make disciples. And I asked them, or they asked me, well, what's a disciple? And you kind of think, well, that's kind of funny. They should know that. But interestingly enough, there are several different perspectives that people give when um, I ask them about what's a disciple. Not necessarily that they're wrong, but uh, we decided to come up with some uh, statements that really for us describe what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what it means to make disciples who make disciples. So if you just go to the next uh, slide there. So these are our seven statements. They're found on our webpage. But for us, they're really important because it's the core of who we are and what we're to be doing is to make disciples who make disciples. So uh, if you can read this with me, I, I would just ask you to do that. Uh, these seven statements, I'm going to focus on the, the last one this morning, but they're key to, I think, what we are called to be as followers of Jesus. You could say them in other ways, that's fine. Uh, we might not have every little thing uh, in there. There might be some other things that you could add, but for us, they're core pathways to what it means to follow Jesus. So let's just uh, read this together, shall we? His life, I have begun following Jesus and am depending on the spirit of Jesus in my journey. His mission, I am being sent by Jesus to bless others and invite them to follow him. His character, I am learning to be like Jesus in my attitudes, behaviors, and character. His love, I am learning to love God and love others. His teachings, I am learning the teachings of Jesus. His disciples, I am helping someone, and someone is helping me be a growing follower of Jesus. And his community, I am participating in a community of followers of Jesus on mission to the world. I want to talk about being a community, a selfless community, a transforming community today. And when we think of community, I don't know what you think of, but the first thing I think of is, of course, uh, my family. And so the next slide kind of has a picture of my family as we are. This is uh, uh, us. Oh, we look much thinner. Oh, man, that's a good picture. I like this. I like this PowerPoint. Yeah. So uh, to, the, uh, to your left here is my daughter, Jennifer. And uh, Jennifer is 22, coming on 23. And next to her actually is James, uh, her fiancé. So on August 6th, they're getting married and our community, our family, is uh, enlarging a little bit. This is our first uh, uh, kind of child getting married. So we're in that process right there. Now next to James is the... Uh, is the uh, tallest in spirit in our uh, family, but that's my wife, Diana, and we have been married almost uh, 30 years. In fact, August 9th is our 30th anniversary, so we'll be celebrating that. And next to her is, is me, and I'm trying to smile. I've decided I can't smile for pictures. I should just keep my mouth closed because there's uh, nothing I can do. Uh, next to me is our youngest son, Nathan, who's 20, and just, as I said, completing his uh, second year at Briarcrest. And then next to him is our oldest, who is Kyle, and he's uh, uh, 24. He's working in uh, Calgary. And so we all have families. We all come from a family. We all are uh, a part of a broader family. Uh, my dad was a preacher's kid, so uh, my grandfather was a pastor. And uh, in our family, uh, the, the church community was a very, very important part of our family. I, I didn't go, I didn't get to watch uh, Wild, The Wonderful World of Disney. 
on Sunday nights. I, you know, we were in church and we were doing the more important things. Uh, that I, we had some arguments every once in a while about that. But the, the church was really important. But as I reflect back into my life and growing up in uh, the community of followers of Jesus, I recognize that there are some times that I went to uh, church meetings, church gatherings, but I'm not always sure that uh, disciple making was really happening, although I saw things. So I was integrated into maybe a youth group or a Sunday school class, and we did those kind of things. But the life on life transformation that I think is part of discipleship sometimes was awkward for me to figure out. And there were times that I felt alone. I felt like I'm not sure what this is all about. But I, I do know that people were there. My parents were there. Um, uh, I had pastors who, uh, you know, were there to answer my questions. And without the community of the followers of Jesus, folks, we can get lost. We need community. It's important. Uh, we can easily get off track if we're out there on our own, feeling alone uh, in following Jesus. When my kids were just young, I think my youngest was about uh, two years old, and so it kind of went up from there. Um, we were out camping in, in the summer and decided uh, I took the kids on a hike because my wife wanted some time and space just to herself. That was her space of holiday just for a few hours. And so we went on a hike, and I decided to go off the path. I thought, I know where I'm going. I know, uh, you know, this area around here. Um, I'm going off the path because I just don't want to be bored and, and just, just walk the same old path that we have a number of times. So I decided to do that and quickly found out that going off the path has uh, interesting um, obstacles that I wasn't prepared for, especially when we came to kind of a, a deep uh, drop-off and I found myself carrying uh, two of my kids across this narrow ledge so they wouldn't fall down. And then we, uh, you know, I decided, boy, I'm not actually really sure. I know we're general area where we are, but I'm not exactly sure how to get back to the campground that we were staying at. So we climbed, uh, we're starting to climb quite a steep hill. And I just stopped and I said to the kids, you know, kids, we just need to pray and ask God to help us. And my oldest son, Kyle, said, Dad, I've been praying for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> so we got back to the campground finally, and I told my kids, you know, you don't have to tell your mother anything about that. <laughs> and so Jennifer, she gets into the trailer where we where we're staying, and she immediately just blurts out she can't keep anything quiet. Dad got us lost. That, that was it. That, you know, uh, yes, I did. But hey, we were found again, right? We got back. Folks, without the community of Jesus, I think it's very easy to get lost. We're, we're parts of many different kinds of groups. We're parts of a family, parts of a neighborhood, a broader community in, in uh, Swift Current and, and the region and, and province. We're maybe part of a sports club or uh, a variety of things. But the community of Jesus draws us together and helps us again to focus on what it means to make disciples who make disciples. If you look back in the New Testament, in, in the word church, the word church comes out of a, uh, a Greek word, it's called ecclesia, and really this word in the Gospels was only used about uh, three times, uh, the word church. Of course, we get more instances of it as we get into the rest of the New Testament, but for Jesus, he only used this about three times, and it was a word actually in Greek that simply meant the assembling of people. That's all it meant, is the assembling of people. But Jesus took this word and he re-emphasized it is the assembly of God's people who are on a mission. He really focused it on that if you read the context 
on what Jesus was focusing on as he declared what the church was and to be. Of course, we know the proverb that it says it takes a village to raise a child. And we know that it really, and I experienced this in my own life, it takes, it takes the church community to raise up disciples who make disciples. But we want to focus on what, what, what parts of the community of Jesus, as followers of Jesus, do we need to focus on? And so if you want to go to the next slide, oh, you're up there already, Acts 2, 42 through 47. I want to, I want to talk about, this is an amazing um, passage that has oodles of information. You can spend weeks talking about this passage alone. I'm just going to talk about three things from this passage to focus on what this uh, community of believers did together and help us focus on as we're the community of Jesus here in Swift Current, what it, what it uh, entails for us. So let's read together Acts 2, uh, 42 through 47. If you want to read along with me, you can. I can just read it. That's, that's, that's fine. You can just follow along. Um, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received food with, their, with glad and generous hearts. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now again, here we kind of get, it seems like this perfect picture of the church. If you read on through Acts, you understand that they had conflicts, they had arguments, they had challenges that they had to face. So just understand that. I mean, uh, this, this passage can certainly declare to us uh, parts of what we're, what we're to be as followers of Jesus. But in the journey of following Jesus, in the journey of being part of a family, of a community, uh, there are the ebbs and flows that do go on. So I want to talk to you about three things from this passage this morning. You can go to the next slide. And that's a devoted community, a sharing and caring community, as well as a community on mission or a missional community. Let's talk about a devoted community. The passage said they were devoted. They were devoted to. And uh, this is, again, an interesting word. It means that they, they would continue, continually do something with intense effort. Uh, despite the difficulty, they persisted obstinately uh, in this, persisted um, and wanted to continue in it. In, in essence, it meant they, devoted, they were so devoted to something they would never, ever give up. They weren't going to give up. Uh, the writer to the Hebrews says it this way, let us uh, consider how we may stir one another onto love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Just a picture of let's not give up. My uh, wife's mother is, is uh, Finnish. Um, she was born in Canada, but both of her parents uh, came from Finland and Im immigrated from Finland. And um, uh, there's a word in Finnish called sisu, and it means having a special strength or a persistent determination. And uh, that was uh, my wife's mother, Hilia, Hilia Jones. She was out just a few years ago. She, uh, she was very healthy. Um, and strong, and she was cutting back um, tree branches in, in the spring. And uh, she fell, uh, she broke her wrist. She knew she'd broken her wrist. And most people would, you know, call somebody for help. She was at home alone. Uh, she didn't do that. She decided to get on a bus and go to the, the hospital and, you know, uh, get fixed up with that. But not until she cleaned up all the tree branches. Uh, just in case somebody came by, right? So she cleaned all that up first, then went to the hospital on her own. Kind of a description of, of determination. Um, and 
And again, it's a call for us. Don't become weary in doing good. For, for the proper time, you'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. So what are we devoted to? What are we to be devoted to? Well, the scripture gives a real description on what they were devoted to. It could be the word, the, the apostles' uh, preaching, to prayer, to fellowship, to all these things. But really, if we sum it up, it would be a focus upon a devotion towards God, okay, to his word, to praying and communicating with him. And even as we were together in, in fellowship and as we're worshiping today and as we're singing songs, isn't it wonderful to be able to do that? You know, uh, it, it's great uh, that uh, the worship team and Kelsey, uh, you know, they can lead us. But we're not focused on Kelsey's voice or great guitar playing. Or maybe we are sometimes, but he does a great job. But the focus is a devotion on God, right? And that's what the early church, as they came together, we want to make sure that our focus is on worshiping God. <coughs> and, and even in the communi uh, community meal together, where, whether that was communion or, or the uh, uh, you know, Lord's table, uh, as uh, we describe it, or if they were meeting together, they were focused on remembering what God has done for them. And then through this community, we see that uh, awe and wonder, awe and wonder happened because there were signs and miracles that were happening. And again, it wasn't a focus on themselves. It was a focus on God. God who did this. God who healed people, who provided restoration, who provided forgiveness. This is part of the devoted community. And it, it's much more than just a once a week meeting. Um, they of course uh, regularly met and, but it was at every opportunity as a community of believers they were uh, wanting to focus upon God. So I told you a, a story about my mother-in-law Hilia, actually she, uh, she just passed away about a month ago. That's why she's in my mind a little bit. And uh, it was quite sudden. So she's quite a healthy lady, and uh, suddenly she was gone. And uh, here's, here's an image that um, I have of just this past month. Um, uh, my wife is in the hospital room just hanging on to her mother's now lifeless arm and sobbing. I'm sure... We have similar images around here. And she was saying goodbye. But the reality, even through that image, is that Jesus is in the room. Right? Jesus is there. And the focus that I sensed, even as, as we were there and gathered around just as family, community, is we have a devotion and a focus on God and what He's doing in, even in the sense of all, all this happening. So uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, what situations we find ourselves in. It's more, I just want to just mention, it's more than just the Sunday morning thing, okay? Our devotion, our, our community connection is a worship of God in, in an everyday aspect of, of where we walk and what we do. I'm participating in a community of followers of Jesus on mission to the world. So secondly, um, what they did was they were a sharing and caring community. So they were devoted and worshiping upward toward God, but they cared for one another. It was, a, it was kind of an inward focus as well in serving one another. Now, we live in such an individualistic culture that I think we can miss the importance of this sometimes. Um, they cared for one another. They had everything in common. Now, sure, uh, we think today we live in Canada, we have social, social agencies and care comes through that. Of course, that wasn't the case in this uh, situation where they lived. There was no social agency. So they were caring for one another each as they had need. 
And uh, really there was a recognition whether they had a little or a lot, none of it was theirs. In fact, they had been blessed by God to be a blessing. And you can see that later on in the book of Acts, how they shared and cared uh, for one another. They gave up their own possessions for others' needs. And this was sacrificial. This wasn't easy. Uh, They didn't get an income tax receipt. Uh, They served each other. 1 Peter 4 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to another without grumbling, as each has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. So here's the question. Now I asked before, what are we devoted to? Here we ask, what do I have? What do we have? What do you have to bring for the betterment of the community of Jesus? What am I willing to sacrificially give to give up and serve God's people? There there are times in, in our lives that we just drop everything and we give up. I mean, I... I remember that uh, just a month ago, you know, here that uh, my mother's mother-in-law is in the hospital. You drop everything, right? And you're there to care for the needs of the family. We're to care for one another. So if there's a need here, yes, we pray. But how can we participate in uh, uh, helping out with that need as well? Because that's what the community of Jesus does. That's what followers of Jesus do. We are available to give sacrificially, to help out with our gifts and talents. So in in a smaller uh, community, there's obviously other things to do. Uh, How are we each using our gifts and abilities to serve God and his church, but also on mission to other things? So it's more than just uh, a paid pastor or somebody doing those things. We're all in this together. We need to participate together. I'm participating in a community of followers of Jesus on mission to the world. And finally, I just, I just would like to, we've talked about kind of focus upward on God and inward uh, with one another, but obviously there's the mission that's all around us. Uh, neighbors, people who don't need Jesus. And there's this community on mission that we reach out it's, it's this scattered community that we're wanting to reach with the grace, the love, uh, the good news of, of God. See, our mission isn't to build a church. It really isn't. Jesus said, I'm, I'm the one who's going to build the church. Our mission is to make disciples who make disciples. And he invites us to join him in that mission. We're, as, as participants, as followers of Jesus, we're supporting uh, one another and encouraging one another in this work, this important work of reaching out to others. So how do we do that? In our day and age, there, there used to be a way that, <coughs> excuse me, that we would just call special meetings at the church facility and people would come. Or Billy Graham would show up, right? In the community and people would come from from all over and do that. We know that in this day and age, although there's some people who still do that, most of the time when I see that being done, it's just church people who show up to those things. So we don't necessarily get people who don't know Jesus to show up when we invite them to a big event. Um, you know, so I, I have grown up in the church and seen all different uh, ways of trying to reach in the community. What I've seen more recently is that because of the, the age we live in, that one of the first open doors into the community is just to be hospitable and bless them. Start blessing people. And of course, we have that in, in another of our, uh, our statements. I'm being sent by Jesus to bless others and invite them to follow him. You know, if you start right from Genesis 
and you follow uh, the word blessing in, in the Bible, blessing is the major theme that God uses to reach people who don't know him. And so if we start to be hospitable, and the Church of Acts was doing this regularly. In fact, they had favor with the people. Why did they have favor? They were, they were people who reached out to others. They were people who were hospitable. They were people who were blessing others. They had favor. Favor means grace. Uh, the real word is, is charis in this, in this passage. It means grace. So they had this favor with people because they were inviting them. They were hospitable. In fact, I would say to you today, it's probably more important to invite someone into your home than into the church. Now, please don't get me wrong when I say that. Doesn't mean I, di I didn't say don't invite them to church. I just think that your first steps to touching base with people around you who God placed in your sphere is to invite them into your relationship and draw them uh, by blessing them and inviting them over for a cup of coffee, whatever that means. Because um, we are called to reach others. So I would ask today, who are we blessing? Who, who is God asking us to bless? Certainly we pray for others, we pray for our neighbors, but who are we blessing and inviting? Um, I, I, I travel a lot and... Uh, so sometimes I get, uh, get prepared to go on a plane and I'll say a little prayer, Lord, if there's anybody that, you know, you have to sit beside me and uh, uh, we can open up a conversation about, about Jesus, you know, do you just lead in that, Lord? And there are times that I'm just going onto the plane and say, Lord, I'm tired, just give me an empty seat beside me, right? So uh, a few months ago, I was getting on a plane and uh, heading home and I had had uh, done some ministry and I was heading home and I was just tired and it was a full packed plane except I was on the window seat there was this guy beside me and there was an empty seat right in the aisle and so the door was closed and I just said to the guy next to me I said wow there's an empty seat on the aisle we could kind of have an empty seat between us and he turns and he looks at me and he says you know you look like a nice guy. I think I'll stay here. <laughs> and so for the rest of the flight, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to TJ, and we talked about Jesus uh, on that plane. God opens up those opportunities. Sometimes I'm not always as hospitable as I should be or want to be, but God will open up those opportunities as we do that. I'm participating in a community of followers of Jesus on mission of the world. Who are we devoted to? You know, there's a lot of things in this world that are calling out to us to be devoted to. God's asking his followers to be devoted to him, uh, to grow closer to him. How are we sharing and caring and sacrificially serving one another? And how, how are we doing at accomplishing the mission that God's given to us? Here are just a couple, as I close, just a couple things. As we think of a community that's on mission in the area of Swift Current that I've seen other churches do, and, and, and maybe they're just examples for you. There's a lot of other things that God could call us to do. But I know a church that uh, every fall and then even in the spring, they'll just do a community cleanup. They probably won't uh, ask. Sometimes they just go and start raking leaves or cleaning up garbage. Sometimes they knock on the door. Um, and they do this all just for their neighborhood. And uh, people kind of come out and say, well, what are you doing? And uh, they just answer, you know, we're followers of Jesus. We're just told her to love our neighbors. And we're striving, striving to do that. Sometimes that opens broader conversations. Another church, they used to have an annual Christmas banquet where all the church people would be gathered together. And they decided, you know what, uh, we do this for ourselves, and that's great, but I think God's calling us to reach our community. So now every year they have a community, community Christmas banquet. And uh, the church people invite the community in, and they serve the community 
uh, some who might not have a Christmas banquet, some who, um, uh, you know, are, they're just getting connected or building relationship. And it's an opportunity to do that. Our church in McCoon, they, they now have uh, three times a year that they send teams from their church to Haiti. And uh, they just have fallen in love with Haiti, and that's a mission field. So they together uh, reach out, and they send teams. They support them. Uh, people from the church are going on a regular basis to Haiti. So those are some areas that people are doing just to uh, be a community of followers of Jesus on mission to the world. Now, there's a lot more here. I won't go in, into it today, but... As I think of the follower, of followers of Jesus as, as the community together, there's a lot we can learn and take away here today. So uh, I just encourage you to look at that. Uh, l- let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to uh, share a little bit from your word uh, to this community, to uh, your followers here. I thank you for each one here today, Lord. You love them. You care about them. Um, Lord, you placed them here for a special purpose, not only to be in community together, but certainly to reach others, to serve together, to reach others in this community for you. So I pray that uh, you would bind them together in unity. You would help them to continually be devoted to you and worshiping you and focusing on you. And help them, Lord, as you unify them together to care and share. I'm sure that continues to go, to go on. But just encourage them in that. And as, Lord, you send people across their path to share the love of Jesus, help them to be open. Help them to be open to what you want them to do, to share the good news that they've received uh, into others' lives. So bless them, Lord. Encourage them, empower them, fill them with you. And in these things we pray, in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless.